Welcome back to the Catacombs. Catacombs and Castles, that is. This is the spin-off to Catacombs, the dexterity-based dungeon delve that had you and your friends flicking discs through dungeon after dungeon in order to face off against one player who controlled all the enemies and the Catacomb Lord. Now, that was a great dexterity-based adaption of dungeon crawls, but this, on the other hand, is a skirmish-based game that wants to exist as a separate but related brother to Catacombs. You see, Catacombs and Castles suits two to eight players. It promises to be faster, more approachable, more streamlined, and ultimately get you into the action, facing off against an enemy much quicker. So we're going to take a look at how it holds up to each of those promises and how it holds up to the original as we dive into the Catacombs and Castles. In Catacombs and Castles, there are two main modes. So there's team modes where an equal number of Catacombs and Castles heroes are doing battle head to head. And then there's also boss mode where one player is controlling a boss and all their minions facing off against a team of players on the opposite side. Either way, if you're on a team of heroes, you share a pool of health. And this is a big departure from Catacombs. And this accomplishes two main things. First off, it makes sure that all players are in the battle and no one's getting eliminated. And the second thing is, is that it makes sure that the game ends soon enough and it never overstays its welcome. In the box, each team has four characters and a boss to choose from, and off the bat, the characters are already way more interesting than those in the original. Each character has two different basic shot sequences to choose from and can be equipped with all kinds of special abilities. Elzra continues to push the envelope on what can be translated into an intuitive dexterity system, and they once again nail it, from the steampunk automaton that can shoot out an arm, grab an enemy, and throw them, to the huntress who calls for aid summoning additional units to the battlefield, there are all kinds of different effects that are each uniquely fun, thematic, and tactical. To finish setup, teams alternate placing large wooden obstacles on the board, which feels much more aggressive than it sounds, once the game starts, teams alternate activating their characters, strategically using the wide variety of different shots to their advantage. One of the cleverest aspects of this game, and one of the most important aspects of the strategy, is that there is an interaction between armor tokens, health, and abilities that is really cool. So each character comes equipped with a double-sided armor token. You can flip it over in order to nullify the effects of any attack hitting that character. Do it a second time, they lose their armor token. Now, this is really important because there's a wide variety of buckwild effects that you may want to stop the status effect or you just want to stop them from receiving damage. Either way, if you use them too early, then you lose that character's protection and they become vulnerable to future attacks. Use it too late and then their abilities get powered up. Yeah, those ability cards that I mentioned earlier, these things have little health token symbols on them. They need to be powered up before you can use them. You do that by inflicting damage on your opponent, you take their health tokens, and on future activations, you wipe that away, and boom, you have an incredibly devastating and incredibly specific attack at your disposal. This interaction between the armor tokens, the health, and the ability cards is super cool and it is probably my favorite thing that Catacombs and Castles brings to the Catacombs line. Play continues until one team runs out of health or the boss dies, leaving the survivors as the champions. And this game moves surprisingly quick, yet it maintains this rare balance of being both fast and lighthearted, yet at the same time strategically satisfying. Okay, so there are two things that I think that are really worth mentioning about this game that aren't going to be everyone's favorite aspect. Certainly not my favorite aspect of the game. First off, the characters are functionally the same whether they're on the castle or catacomb side. Now the ability cards that you have access to are different for each side, but the basic shot that's available to each character is identical whether you're on catacombs or castle. That is to say, the huntress behaves the same as the catacombs version ninja. The castle guard is the same as the lich type lady, and the princess is the same as the princess. That's 
okay for balance reasons. I totally get that they want to make sure that the same fundamental elements are available to everyone, but at the same time, it just kind of lessens the potency of how awesome and unique these characters are. The other thing that's in this game that I think is really worth noting is that the shared health, while it's a boon, it's also a curse. Yeah, it keeps everyone in the game, which is great, and it keeps you from having to chase down one remaining enemy, which always sucks whether it's in a video game, it's in a board game, or it's in life. But in this case, it does allow you to abuse the system. You see, as soon as one player on a team runs out of their armor token, which allows them to nullify attacks, well, all of a sudden you can gang up on that player. Not everyone is going to have a great time when they are the sole person getting smacked around for the remainder of the game. Again, this game moves really quick and that situation's not going to happen every game, but the potential is there. One of my complaints about the original Catacombs was that the rule book itself was really hard to navigate if you wanted to find a specific rule. And I'm happy to say that in Catacombs and Castles, they have managed to learn from their mistakes. And this rule book is much more clear, concise, and compact, giving you things like a rules reference of all the shots that you are going to make in the game and more or less what they do. And if you need to elaborate, the rule book is much easier to find what you're looking for. So good on you, Elzra, for getting much better at writing rule books. At its core, Catacombs and Castles is still a dexterity game, and no amount of clever adaptions and character customization will change your mind if you just hate the idea of shuffling wooden discs around a table. Likewise, this is a game to be taken lightly, because screw-ups as you woefully under or overshoot a disc at critical moments happen, but the tone and pace of the game help that feel hilarious rather than frustrating. Lastly, while a session of castles is far more thrilling and tactical than any single room in the original catacombs, it does feel less grand and less robust than its older brother. But then again, that's kind of the point of this being a wholly separate and smaller game. So in case you can't tell by the way that I'm snuggling the game box right now, I love Catacombs and Castles, and I haven't gone into just how amazing I think the artwork is yet. I mean, Quan Chai Moria has really outdone himself here in just coming up with character design after character design that is so incredibly cool. I mean, just look at this box art. You want to go and invade those catacombs and protect that castle, or maybe vice versa. I don't know which side you want to support. The other thing that's really cool about it, and this is like a secret thing because it's not in the rule books, Elzra Games has released a draft PDF that I'm going to put a link to in the description below that allows you to combine the two games. Yeah, you can export your Catacombs characters into Catacombs and Castles, or your Catacombs and Castles characters back into Catacombs in a really simplified, intuitive way. It is awesome to think that this can be not only this cool skirmish game that can be played two different ways, but it's awesome to think that this can also be viewed as a character expansion with really diverse characters with a very wide range of abilities that can go back into your original catacomb set. I can absolutely say that if you like catacombs, that this is an easy recommend for you. And if you've never played catacombs before, but you want something that's approachable, fast, fun, and just hilarious to play, then yeah, I totally recommend this game. So that's it. The Cardboard Herald recommends. Catacombs and Castles by Elzra Games.